Welcome to the Be Ruthless Show, where we have the conversations that other people don't. The conversations that other people won't. I'm your host, Sam Ruth, and I'm ready to make a lot of noise and disrupt things ruthlessly. Thanks for being here today. Now let's get to it. Welcome back to the Be Ruthless Show. I'm your host, Sam Ruth, and I am so excited about this episode. I am here with two of my beautiful co-authors from Dear Younger Self, and instead of reading their bios to you, I would prefer to have them introduce themselves and share a little bit about who they are and why they chose this amazing book to be a part of. Erica, do you want to start? Sure. Um, so I'm... Uh, Dr. Erica Scott, and I've been a therapist for 38 years. And before that, I worked in the art world. I was a professional artist, and I ran a, a very small museum, one of my first jobs out of college. And there I designed exhibits and activities for children all around art, which seemed to be preparation for becoming a therapist at a later date. Um, so I guess it's not a surprise. I'm a creative arts therapist and I've been using art, all forms of art with uh, people who have addiction, people who have trauma, even complex developmental trauma and dissociative identity disorder. And so um I have published chapters in textbooks. Very few people read them. <laughs> and so I have been wanting to move from clinical writing to writing for people in the world like me. Things that are uh, uplifting, but also grounded in reality. And I believe that many people have spiritual experiences they're afraid to talk about. In fact, I'd like to do a book called Spiritual Secrets. We have all these books about sexual secrets, or, but I think people keep spiritual secrets because they're afraid if they describe a paranormal or alternate reality experience, people will think they're crazy. And so um, I wanted to be in this book, Dear Younger Self, partly because it's so much a part of the work I do with my clients, but it's also so much of the work I've done in my own healing to love my younger self to, um, and, and through that gateway, love the whole of who I am, not just my younger self, but that's a good start. Sometimes people can't look in the mirror and see their adult self and love their adult self, but they can have compassion for their younger child self. And so um, I ended up writing about um, myself at age 28, which was a major transition. And it was a time of upheaval that changed my life. And I had been engaged to be married to a French goat farmer. <laughs> And he was one of the loves of my life. And I'll try to shorten this. Um, last year during the pandemic, when things slowed down, I began to feel as if his soul was visiting me. It was almost like he was in my room and I hadn't felt his presence in 40 years. And I am not a person who cries very much. And I began to cry and I cried for eight months. And I had incredible dreams. He showed up in a dream. Um, I was ready to give up my search for him. And I've been writing poetry. And I was tired of looking at balding men with reddish frizzy hair <laughs> and a cleft chin, um, older men. And I was like, OK, I'm done. I, I, I spent too much time on this. I'm ready to move on. And that night, I dreamed that. Um, a holy African man dressed in ceremonial garb approached me and offered me a bowl of an elixir to drink. And as I took it to drink it, he leaned over and said the word courage with a French accent. It's a similar word, same word. And he said courage. 
And I thought, okay, I can't give up my search. So I kept processing and then even went back to France, <clears throat> excuse me, last year to visit mutual friends and uh, visit where we used to live and uh, complete my journey. And I, I buried crystals and uh, symbolic uh, objects in the earth there because the dirt, the earth was so much a part of the experience. So it's just allowing people to embrace their subconscious processes and, <clears throat> and trust it, even though it feels very strange sometimes, and take it to completion and a deeper healing. And I feel more whole now, and my friends feel it as well. And I'm much happier. It was a grief I didn't know I was carrying. And so now I'm freer. So I want to share that. <laughs> I wow. love that. That's amazing. Yeah. So thank you. And I love you both. And I'm so honored that we're in this book together. It's like your <clears throat> courage, your vivaciousness, your wisdom, your character, your integrity, all of that inspires me. Thank you. Thank you. You're so sweet. <laughs> That's true. Thank you. I, I, a friend will tell you I'm not quick on compliments. <laughs> so thank you. Um, so do you know how, um, I think the statistic is 2% or less of female entrepreneurs and business owners ever hit a million dollars in revenue. Mm -hmm. Well, that's like, that, that's like a problem for me <laughs> and for women everywhere. So I, um, just set out on a mission to change that because I think that women can, um, be themselves and like kind of double down on their strengths and create the systems and strategies that allow them to work as their best self, not be like thrown into like sort of the, the way men work. Mm -hmm. We can all work the way we work best and then everybody gets better. So it's not in competition of men. It is alongside. So we all, you know, can uh, rise up. And the thing is, is that I started my career in the beauty industry because I just wanted to help people feel better. Like, just what can I do to help you feel better? And then through that, I realized, wow, well, there's inner stuff that needs to happen. And so that's where the coaching piece came. And now the, the, the reason I wanted to be part of younger self is I, a lot of the work I do is about going back and talking to your younger self to do some healing so that you can bring yourself to the present day, because through a lot of the work, coaching and speaking that I've done throughout my life and career, it's like, you can often take two of the same, you know, people that grew up in the same area, same background, same circumstance, but one achieves more than the other. And it, you know, and so my curiosity of like, I wonder why that is, why do we do that? Like, what's the human response to this? Um, just allowed me to ask a lot of interesting questions and figure out that so much of it is about the mindset that we have for ourselves and then who we surround ourselves with. So I always say if I, if I could do it, somebody who um, didn't think they could do anything but hair and didn't think, you know, I could ever even spell a word correctly. If I can be an international bestselling author, anyone can do it. So a lot of, you know, a lot of the clients that I coach and, and mentor, people that take on my programs are really about, let's really look at what your strength is and let's double down there. That's where the revenue comes from. And you design your business in a way that serves your life instead of making all the mistakes I did in the beginning of life and going backwards where you think you had to work harder and harder. And then you're like, suffer, you suffer, your relationships suffer, your mental health suffers, your emotional health, your, just your health in general. So when we look at things like our strengths and design our business to serve our life, everything changes. So interesting. I thought of two clients who are dealing with completely different things. They're seeing me for entirely different reasons, but with both of them figuring out what they want to do, what they enjoy, what their hobbies are, what's fun, right? Like they're both stuck in going through the motions 
and being in this automatic <laughs> state where they're not even enjoying it anymore. And so we are going back to that, like go back to being that five, six, seven year old kid when right. you had no fear and you right. could do anything because <laughs> it was fun. And if you didn't like it, you didn't have to overanalyze what's the world going to think of me if I don't do this? I'm just going to stop riding a big wheel because I don't enjoy it anymore. Right. Yeah. So it's really interesting that you say that because that's my approach. Yeah. And they're, they're seeing me for entirely different things, right. but it is going back to that childlike mentality. Well, it's yeah. so funny too, because I, before Dear Younger Self was coming out, I had wrote an email out to my client list of all my clients saying, Dear Younger Self, have you ever, and just like all these sort of things. And Kate, who's our publisher, right? She goes, I have a secret that I haven't shared yet. You need to be in this book. And so I was Aww. like, yes, of course I did. Oh my God, that's so funny. So it was like, so it was really amazing how it happened because it's just so much about what, you know, what I think it's like, we don't realize until we bring awareness to it, how it shows up in different areas. Like we're having problems in different areas. It's not the same thing that clients come to us for, right? But so often it ties back to these certain moments that, Stop riding the big wheel and go hang upside down in the monkey bars. It's not a big deal. We have another author who was supposed to be on this call, but she had something medical come up and she couldn't be here, but she was visiting Colorado last week and we had lunch and I was telling her this book really was designed just for me. And we allowed 29 <laughs> other authors to be a part of it because I'm writing my own book, Redefining Ruthless, which is coming out in a few months. And it really wow. is my Oh, my entire letter to my younger self. And so Kate actually said to me, hey, Sam, <laughs> I'm doing this project. I didn't know she also said, hey, Tracy. So we all got this call. Hey, say, hey, uh, Erica, I'm doing this project. And we all so thought it was funny. our own book. And we just invited these other people into it. <laughs> well, isn't that interesting though, of how when you really put your authentic self out into the world, how it attracts. Cause meeting the two of you along with so many of our other co-authors, I mean, you're like my sisters. I feel closer to you than, you know, some of the sisters I grew up with and, you know, and I'm not shy about saying that. Like I love my family, but there is something so different about people that have that same value, you know, like where you mm -hmm. would have you, this really is your book fully mm -hmm. because that's who you embrace as your identity. Same to me, you know, same to Erica. Mm -hmm. And I know you're talking about Erin. So, she, you know, same thing. She's amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and everyone in the, to anyone listening, this book is coming out in nine days. If you're listening live, if it's wow. already out and you're listening to a replay, this book is special. These authors are special. It's your first book, correct, Erica? No, second. No, so the, some, this is not our first time. We have, mm -hmm. there's something different about this book. I can't explain it. I am more attached. I am more invested. There is something about it. I, ke I can't explain it. I feel like everyone in the world can see the title and be drawn to it in a different way than women who illuminate, women who dream. There is something mm -hmm. about, something's going to happen with More grounded. And I just, got, I just got all the God bumps when you're saying that. Mm -hmm. So I think something's happening. Mm -hmm. Something, I don't know what, you know, I mean, I, and I said to Aaron when we were at lunch, I don't know if it's Good Morning America. I don't know what it is, but this one's different. And I, wow. I, I have felt it from the time I heard the title and wow. everyone I talk to feels that way. So uh, not to minimize any of our other books <laughs> and any of our other stories or authors, but this one is, and it appeals to any age you wrote yes. to your 28 year old younger self, right? Like mm -hmm. there's no one that cannot relate to this. Mm -hmm. So I took a very different approach. The way that I wrote this chapter is different than anything I've ever written. I was really scared. Like this one seems different to me as well, Samantha, because I, I remember I kept reaching out to our t our support team and saying, oh, I'm scared. Like I was scared for feedback. It was like, I mean, I, I'm always nervous. You're putting your vulnerability out there. And a lot of what I talk about is about worthiness and stepping into the fact that you are enough. All, you know, always that's kind of my overarching, what I help my clients with. But the way that I did this was a different way to write for me. It was bringing in all these different elements 
Um, this one's really different. So I, I, I 100% feel everything you're saying. I lost Jim just over five years ago, but I went home for Thanksgiving. It was my first Thanksgiving in Michigan without him. So oh. even though I've been back to visit my family, like Thanksgiving without him to, you know, too, it was too much. And I rewrote my chapter on the plane ride home. <laughs> and I, I got back to Colorado and I sent a new chapter and it's like, I mean, I've, I've said, maybe we don't let dad read this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This one off to the side, <laughs> like I... when faces of mental illness came out, he, and I love my dad. I'm a daddy's girl. Uh, but he sees my life his like through his eyes mm -hmm. so he had to edit my anxiety like he called me to say that you know that's not what happened oh. that, and, and, <laughs> so I'm like I rewrote it and I'm fine with it until he, you know it's in his hands yeah. <laughs> that well, takes a lot of courage call us, call us for the support when that happens mm -hmm. we're yeah. here for you yeah. Anytime. Yeah. Cause that, Anytime. cause it is challenging. I mean, I've had, I've had a lot of similar experience with, you know, putting my stuff out there and having family read it, you know, they make it about them when this is like, it's not, it's, this mm -hmm. is not, nothing has been like, like Jack Canfield say, says, this is not, you know, this is nothing against you. This is for me, mm -hmm. but they can't make it about, you know, about themselves. This is like your healing journey. And I think a lot of people that will read Dear Younger Self, no matter where you are, because we have 30 different stories, your healing journey like can begin and, you know, just dep depending on where everybody is. So I think it's going to really help so many people in deep, meaningful ways, no matter where they are. It's interesting because when I start, I've written my whole life and my mom always told me I should write and let other people read it. Kate's the one who helped me through that piece. But when I decided I would let people read my writing, I sat down with my mom and said, I need you to know I'm putting some things out there. I thought she would have trouble receiving what I was putting into the world. I didn't expect it to be my dad, right? It's it's different. It's unbelievable what can happen sometimes, the reactions and you never know. Um, but for me, it's, heal I'm doing it it's therapeutic like you said Erica it's therapeutic and yeah. I'm doing it and if just one person out there mm -hmm. can say oh my god I'm not crazy like oh mm -hmm. my god mm -hmm. that that happened to me too then it's worth it it's I I don't care if someone else is struggling with it my mm -hmm. uh I never name names I never uh mm -hmm. but my mother-in-law who I found out through my through Jim's best friend passed away um, just at the end of last year uh, after my first book came out did not like something I wrote as well and it's like this is this I was just talking about things people said to me like you're still you're still doing this right you know and and these are our these are our stories that's right. That this is this is my life. This is what I am going through getting over the loss of my husband. Mm -hmm. And um to anyone who reads any of my stories, if something I say hurts you, it is not intended to hurt you. It is how I am healing. I am putting mm -hmm. words on paper to get through the day. So this is what I tell myself and my clients that we want our stories to become conscious rather than roaming around in our subconscious, dictating our life in a way that we may or may not want. We don't want a child driving the school bus, which is our life. And so telling these stories, even late in life, are really important because especially when like Tracy is telling us about, and you both of you are telling us about how to have more uh, ownership of the direction of our lives, our businesses, our success. And we want to clear what's in the subconscious so that it's not working against us. 
And so that's what this is, is making the stories conscious so yeah. that we have a more, we're more at a place of choice and congruency. And so when you're subconscious and you're conscious, decisions are aligned, there's no stopping you. Yeah. Oh, it's pretty that's, cool. It's amazing. It's true, right? Yeah. Tracy mentioned Jack Canfield. I was stumbling along in my first year of, of grieving my loss. And um, all I could think to do was listen to Jack Canfield audible books because I couldn't read. Uh, reading was very, very difficult to me. And I went to the mountains where we got married and I brought my success principles book and I sat under the tree with my dog. I only had one at the time. And someone came up to me and said, are you in Jack Canfield's training group? <laughs> and and she had a puppy and my dog <laughs> who was also grieving. So your um, friends instantly, like instantly, that's hilarious. Instantly. Right? Like, and, and I had not been like socializing or letting people in, but I was like open. Oh, tell me more. My dog who had been antisocial also starts playing with this puppy. And we, I spent the whole week I was there with this person I tease Jack to this day that he has horrible marketing because I had never heard about his training programs and I use his books with my clients <laughs> my whole career. So I came home, signed up for his training programs, met Kate within days. That's amazing. Immediately started, wow. uh, signed up for Women Who Illuminate. And, wow. and it's just like you mentioned the connections and community and and finding the right people so for people struggling I was sitting under a tree I did not go to a singles meetup group right <laughs> you don't have to jump out of your comfort zone yeah. I allowed one person into my universe because the conversation and the puppy seemed Oh, like that, that seemed like it fit into my world and it led me to Kate Butler, which led me to these people and my world instantly started changing. Wow. It's so amazing. It's because it, it's true. You just have to show up, right? You just have to go outside. That's all you have to do. Just go outside. Like, it doesn't matter. Like you can just be on your own daily life. That's amazing. And these, I mean, these are my people. These are, these are my people. Yeah. Like family that I people. would never have known that I still have my friends and family that I've had my whole life, but I also have these people who I would not have. Yeah. And I have writing and I have Kate who is like, knows me better than anyone because we share these stories with her. So mm -hmm. while, and I was at my darkest, right? Like I, all I decided was I'm going to work with Jack Canfield because I don't know what else to do. And most people who are working with Jack are doing it for their business, for right? Mm -hmm. So I still, like, I was I was the odd one out. I was like, I'm here because I'm lost. I don't know what I want, but I'm here. <laughs> so all you have to do is find something that feels right for you. And you don't have to know why. I had no clue why. I was the planner. It was completely unfamiliar. But that was my plan. I'm going to work with Jack. Don't know what's next, but I'm going to work with Jack. And I met these people. And I thought I was going to work with Jack forever. That I was going to find a way to be part of Team Jack. But I found Kate. The plan <laughs> shifted. Right. Interesting. Because it sounds like you just had trust, right? Like it, that, It's like that thing of like, when we, when we listen, e even in the dark, right? Even in the darkest times, when we listen to the pool, of where what's guiding us it all the answers are revealed and then surrounding yourself with such a powerful community I think is always like that's like the best advice I ever give anyone it's like you don't have to limit yourself to where you think you are right it's just like get a little curious just a little and open it up a little bit you know because how magical that all of us really feel the connection in the pool that we know each other, right? And it's all just from sharing stories. I mean, some, like living across the world from each other at times. It's and also important, oops, sorry. It's also important to find a group like this where women genuinely want you to do well. They genuinely want you to be successful and there's no competition. I am so exhausted from the competition 
in our world, in business and corporations. And it's, it's ruthless and ruthless. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so destructive. And so find your, your team and choose them. Those that encourage you that genuinely are happy when you succeed. Before we started recording, we were talking about my <laughs> disgust after the Super Bowl, during the Super Bowl, with some of the conversations I've seen today. Um, so as we talk about finding the right people, seeing people bashing Rihanna, um, seeing Dak Prescott getting booed by the Eagles fans, I, I really, truly, it makes my stomach turn, right? Like, I don't want to live in a world where we boo an amazing athlete. I am not cheering the Eagles losing. I'm cheering the Chiefs winning. And we all know I'm a diehard Cowboys fan. So we can lift each other up without pushing others down. Yeah. Yes. Well, I, it's like that thing, like, I genuinely want you to win. Yes. Period. I, I just want you to win. And if there's anything I ever want for myself, like I want it for everyone. It, it just is that clear for me. And I, 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 I struggle with that because... I trust that everyone's like that and it has not always been the case. Right. So I, I, I struggle with being clear about my intention. Right. But then without becoming resentful or cruel or unkind, like, you know, I don't want the world to affect me in that way personally. So I set the intention and then just have a little, um, a little, uh, protection so that I can, you know, come from a place of wanting everyone to win, but not put myself in vulnerable situations that people could take advantage. Right. Like that, yes. that's, that's the thing. It's like, it's yes. a really delicate balance. It is. It is. And Martin Luther King spoke about that. If, the importance of not just sharing. He, he's, of course, he said it better than I'm going to say it, but about, um, okay, Sean Penn said it really well at a Seder, I intended. Um, he said, how can we be content with our successes when we feel and and the cacophony of suffering around us I said that can't be acceptable that, that that we can't ignore the suffering and then be happy I think it's true whether you're aware of it or not mm -hmm. I, I, there has to be something missing in your soul if you're not caring about all people and that doesn't mean enabling people that hurt other people. This means caring for all people, regardless of class or race or gender or gender expression, right? Nationality, culture. Yeah. And this whole podcast, you know, I want to raise awareness. I want to have the conversations. Christy was supposed to join us and she's locked out of her office. Oh, no. <laughs> um, and I, I, I will have her on at another point in time to discuss. I thought they did a decent job, a good job of having sign language and covering things for, and they didn't but I can't explain it in a way that she can, and she's not here to cover that. But I wa did, they have, did they have sign language last year? No. So is that progress? Yes. But do we need to do better? Yes. And so mm -hmm. I want to understand what they did wrong because she posted something last night and I saw it and apparently he wasn't on the screen in all angles. So she could, he, he could, she couldn't see the sign language from, from all angles on the television. And so at one point in time it was visible and then it wasn't. So she oh. was essentially blind, you know, for part mm -hmm. of the broadcast. So we, yeah. we, we yeah. need to continue to do better. And 
Mm -hmm. uh, I want, I want to have these conversations and I want, I don't want to cheer when someone from the rival team is injured. And I don't want to right. mock someone who's pregnant's body image. And I want to bring up the fact that this happened yesterday on national television and people are doing it on social media today. And I'm not okay with that, no matter who your team is. Mm -hmm. And so while it was a good game and it was entertaining and there were great commercials, in my opinion, that's still a form of bullying. And if you're liking and ignoring these posts, we're contributing to it. So mm -hmm. I'm bringing it up because that's what this podcast is about. And I would be remiss to ignore it the day after the Super Bowl. Dear Younger Self comes out in nine days. <laughs> we are three of the 30 authors. You can read 27 additional stories besides ours. If it is past the 22nd, it is already available on Amazon. You can share it. You can like it. You can write a review on Amazon. You can do any of these things you can get as a, for yourself or a gift for anyone. It really truly is for anyone of all ages. Is there anything I'm forgetting? If if you are someone who loves and supports us and you're buying more than one book to help, to help us all, because this is one great way to support women today in the world is to buy our book, 30 women. You, su and you support man. 30 women at, with one book. One but young you man. Yeah, Michael's. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, thank you. Michael. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah. and yeah, if you buy more than one book, please buy them individually on launch day so that each one counts. Apparently, I learned this the hard way that if you buy multiple books uh all in one group, it only counts as one book. That is true. We oh. do have one young adult. I want to shout out to our young adult. Michael, he is not only, I mean, he's going to make a huge difference because there are young adults so afraid to share their stories. So mm -hmm. we are all sharing our stories, but he is part of an age group that he is going to make a huge impact. I'm so unbelievably proud and honored to be a part of this with him. Uh, thank you for listening and being a part of this. Thank you for sharing your stories thank today. You and for the world, ladies, until next time, everyone, always Thank be you. ruthless. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening today. Your support means everything to me, truly. If this podcast resonates with you, please do me a favor and join in the ruthless movement by making some noise and doing one of these four things. Subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Tell a friend so we can break stigmas even faster. Leave a review so people can see what you think of the show. And last, if you want to learn more about me and be a part of the Grief Hub community, please head on over to the Facebook group. We'd love to have you. Thanks again for spending your time with us and see you next week.